Hello folks, St. Paul Steam here. Uh, I want to do an unbiased review of this Walesco D310 Foden lorry steam wagon. Um, most people get these and they're just head over heels with having them, so they just uh, show them in all their glory without uh, pointing out the uh, problem areas or things that I would have liked to have known when, before I bought this one. Um, one of the things are the roof. When I got this roof, it was probably a quarter inch from hitting on one side. Now, it's not a big deal to take this roof and bend it a little bit and get it where you want to so it fits. That's not an issue at all. And I moved this bracket. I bent it back a little bit because the roof tended to not let the funnel seat in where it's supposed to go. So I bent that back a little bit, bent the roof back in shape. Not a big deal. Uh, there are some things that are a little more important than others. Um... I consider this, uh, there's right there in the chassis on both sides, kind of a weak spot because all there is is a little flat piece of metal and there's no angle to it at all. So as you can see, there's a little weakness to it. This bed fits on this either way. I've got it this way because of this air adapter that I put in and I'll talk about that in a minute. But when this bed is on place, in place there, that sight glass is worthless. You can't see it. You can't see around these two dowel rods, and you, there's just no way you're going to be able to view it. Uh, there is really nice D310 uh, cut out in the frame there, and the Walesco on the back. I like that quite well. And uh, let's talk about the cab for just a minute. There, uh, you got to remember, this is the basic burner and uh, boiler assembly from for all Walesco um, rollers and tractors. So it's they've just modified it a little bit with this chassis and. And utilized uh, uh, standard tried and true boiler and burner assembly but where the whistle would have went right back here it was a five millimeter plug and all it was is just a plug so I removed that and made my own little uh, air supply there so I could run it as a static display which I like to do and uh, when I was researching these I would have really liked to have seen a really solid view of the underneath the pulley systems and just what it looked like under here. And this is what I'm talking about, the weak area here. There's really no reinforcement on both sides, so it does flex and bend a little bit. It's not terrible, but it does. Um, the flywheel is two and a half inches around. you got to remember, these are metric, so it's not exact. Uh, this drive right here, this groove, is a half inch. And then it runs down to an inch and a half pulley right here. These are all nylon, by the way. And then into a final drive of a two and a half inches. Uh, you're going to need a needle nose pliers every time you take this belt on and off. And um, people complain about the slippage of the belt. Yeah, there's slippage. Uh, it doesn't have the, the greatest traction. Matter of fact, the first time I fired it up, I didn't know it was supposed to be moving. And Because it's direct drive, if that belt's on, it's going to move. Uh, but yeah, there is some slippage to it. Um, the fuel tray is really far under there. It's about a little over four inches from the edge to there. So getting the fuel tray under there while it's lit is a is fun, as you might imagine. Forest Classics in England does make a Bix burner kit, and I think the uh, 026 ceramic burner kit has enough pipe to be able to work on this model, I'm going to give it a try. There's many modifications I'm going to be doing in the future, and I'm not going to talk about too many of them. But that Bix, the fuel tank will sit right there behind the steering wheel, I think. And I can plumb it up and right into the uh, the firebox underneath. Uh, the wheels are plastic. The throttle has a plastic handle, but that doesn't bother me really at all. It doesn't seem to really... It just doesn't bother me. Um... That's about all I can think of on this. Like I say, I have to put the uh, wagon bed on backwards, and it fits both ways. It fits a little, fits right up tight against the cab the other way, but with this uh, air supply right there, it's, it kind of gets in the way. But right out of the box, this would run on uh, just right at two pounds. Really good runner both directions and uh, 
question might be, uh, would I buy it again? Yeah, actually I would. I'm happy with it. I mean, it, it has some shortcomings, but it's an attractive little mobile unit, and uh, I'm, I'm still really like it. So I hope this helped you with your decision on uh, whether you would like to have one or not, but uh, I'm happy with it. It is a bolt together design. Almost everything is nut and bolt. And uh, I find that handy for the modifications I'm going to make to it, which will be plenty, I imagine. But. Let's see if I can get a close up view here. Pardon the noise. I haven't said it before, you'll need a needle nose pliers to get that belt pulled up through them two holes around that pulley. Uh, it's, it's a lesson in the utility to try to do it any other way. Anyway, this video is getting long, but I hope you enjoyed it and I uh, hope this answered some of your questions. Uh, have a good day, St. Paul Steam. Sign off.